Hi everyone, so I am Katie Bell and I work as Senior Conservation Officer for Ulster Wildlife. And for those of you that don't know Ulster Wildlife, we are basically the Wildlife Trust here in Northern Ireland. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about the red squirrel, grey squirrel and pine marten situation currently in Northern Ireland and a little bit about the conservation work we do across the country. So this is a graphic we use as part of Red Squirrel Awareness Week um, in September and it's just basically something we've used for the public to raise awareness of red squirrels in Northern Ireland. This isn't everywhere you find them but it's just a nice little graphic that gives an idea of where you can go and spot red squirrels. And the feedback we got from this is basically that a lot of the general public didn't know that we have so many little pockets of red squirrels across the country now. So this was very good for our engagement. We have a load of red squirrel volunteer groups and there's so many of them across the country. We're very lucky. There's so many volunteers dedicated to red squirrel conservation. And I've heard this morning about all of the other volunteers across other um, countries in the UK. This is slightly out of date now. A new version will be um, produced later this year. And that's because we actually have two new squirrel groups um, this year. One of them up here in Benevena because we had a new population of red squirrels identified in 2021. And then the second one that's just um, developed is the Mid Ulster Red Squirrel Group. So we are working with them and to try and get them set up. And then we will finally have a big kind of group working here and that's mostly kind of grey squirrel country but it's good to ha have a group set up in the middle of the country so it's wonderful wonderful to see so many volunteers working on red squirrels in Northern Ireland. So just a bit of context about um, these three species that we're going to talk about so um, in 2019, we were part of an All-Ireland survey, and this was done with NUI Galway, and I know Emma Shee, you, who you've heard from today and we'll hear from later, um, had some involvement in with this as well. And it just gave us a bit of context. The survey was done in 2012 and then repeated in 2019. And this just kind of shows you that we still have good populations of red squirrels across, across the country. And this is really interesting when we look at our grey squirrels. So when you look at the map um, of grey squirrels here, you can see that in 2012, um, there was still quite a decent spread, but actually you can see that the spread is like less than, than reds, which is quite interesting. There may be obviously higher densities of our greys in, in certain areas but the spread is less. And you can also see when we redid this in 2019, that the, red, the gray squirrel numbers that we encountered decreased massively again. And this is very interesting when you look at the mid counties. Now, it, for people that don't know, gray squirrels basically came here after they came to um, mainland and they came from England in 1911. And it was basically six squirrels came as a wedding present to an estate in County Longford. So they were introduced into the middle counties. So a perfect place for them to kind of spread out from there. Um, but once I show you um, the Pine Martin map, this will explain this a bit more, but this is really interesting now that basically greys have all but disappeared from this mid region of Ireland. So what we did after this, so we had this 2019 data and then we resurveyed again in 2020. We've then moved on and we're doing the survey every other year. So we'll be surveying Northern Ireland again in 2022. But we basically spent the whole of 2020 surveying for red, greys and pine martens. And most of you will be familiar with the methodology of putting out cameras and feeders and leaving them with two, for two weeks. Now we did this alongside Josh Twining he was doing work for the British Ecological Society and that allowed us to cover more of the country. So we covered about 150 woodlands across Northern Ireland. And this just this is basically what we found once we've completed our 2020 survey, we then combined it with our results from 2017. And this is basically our red squirrel map. This is quite a positive thing. We have quite a good spread of red squirrels across Northern Ireland. Um, there's obviously parts where you don't find them, but we keep, we're keeping finding little pockets of them. Now, Fermanagh here would be the most healthiest. Um, and just for context, the, the paler, the yellow colour is when we find them one year, the orange two years, and the red three. 
As you can see out west, we have a really good, healthy population of red squirrels. All of our other populations are basically smaller and fragmented, but they're all still doing okay. But that basically means they're more at risk from, from gray squirrels, all of these smaller ones here. And then if you look at our greys, um, still found in quite a lot of the country, obviously, but they are more kind of concentrated now in our kind of urban areas in our cities, Belfast, Londonderry and places like that. And you can also see what's interesting is that in Fermanagh, we are technically grey squirrel free in that whole county. So we now have red squirrels in all six counties and only grey squirrels in five of those counties. So that's a real positive story for us. Now we do get the odd grey squirrel record, but in all of those years of survey and we didn't detect any grey squirrels. So, but this is somewhere that we're looking at. Then when you compare this to Pine Martin, you can actually see that of these three species, we have the pine martins basically have the biggest spread across the country so um we we are quite lucky in that our pine martins are doing very well we have a stronghold of them out here in fermanagh and they are doing very well alongside our red squirrel population but the more and more we look for them the more and more they're popping up all over the place and i know emma's going to be talking a bit more about pine martins later but this was one that we managed to get I'm not sure no, it's not gonna let me play the video, but this was um, a video of a camera we put out on one of the islands in the middle of Lockern, and we were very surprised to see a Bye Martin pop up on the feeder there. So just if we were looking at the 2012 in comparison to 2019, so this was 2012 um, survey for the Pine Martins, and this is 2019. So we got way more records than we did and they really are just popping up all over the place. But the interesting thing is that when I showed you before these middle counties of Ireland um, that were grey squirrel free, they're now full of pine martens. So we do really think that um, the spread of pine martens and the success of our pine martens is really having um, quite a positive influence on our red squirrel populations in Ireland. And this was just something we picked up on the camera, which was nice um, last year. So you can see here, here's two Pine Martins. And this was out in Fermanagh as well. Two Pine Martins on the feeder. And there is a red squirrel in the background. So I know um, with the spread of Pine Martins, obviously there's a bit of conflict that comes with that, of course. And um, we find that, you know, in areas where they're starting to get more abundant, there's worry of you know, predation on um, chickens and, and things like that. And they obviously nest in houses. So, you know, there are issues with that that we have to address. And we really want to bring more a uh, Pine Martin awareness in our work to the public and ways to kind of deal with those issues that come with them. There's also a bit of fear on when we have these small fragmented populations of red squirrels that Pine Martins may have a negative impact on them but what we we try and show is that what we can see here from from man is when we have good woodland cover we have healthy populations of both reds and pine martens that the two can kind of live alongside each other um i've just threw this in because it was one of my favorite photos we got from our survey and this is from one of our nature reserves so we have a couple of our nature reserves that we also monitor that we're very lucky to have red squirrels at and this is one of the photos we got I just thought it was beautiful with the bluebells and everything just so lovely to see and these are some of the sites that would have used to had greys and now have reds in them so it's lovely and um, so Hines had just shown you this database that he had been working at and one of our projects going forward is basically we're creating a very similar thing. So we've been, Heinz has been very um, helpful in telling us how the process and we think this would be very useful for Northern Ireland. So this is one of the things we're doing over the winter and it'll be ready for next spring. And basically the main reason for that is to try and get a bit more of a handle on our grey squirrel control effort and allow each of the volunteer groups to kind of um, you know, record things when they're out in the field and be able to, you know, analyze the, their own data and see their efforts through, through the year. So that'll be really useful once that we get that up and running. We've also been working um, for the past year and a bit on a red squirrel strategy for Northern Ireland. This is a huge bit of work. We know that one exists for Scotland and one for Wales, and they're also working on the English one right now. Um, we plan to launch this before Christmas, but it's probably going to be on Red Squirrel Appreciation Day in January, so we'll get this out. And 
you know this has been a huge big piece of work but it'll basically allow us to target our conservation efforts going forward in the future and for other organizations and stakeholders to get involved in this so these are just a little snapshot of really our basic aims for that and that we really want to maintain our red squirrel populations maintain their range and we also want red squirrels to recover in former ranges we're also working on um gray squirrel control and that's by human control and also the support of pine martin recovery that's important to put that in there as well but we are working um with all the volunteer groups and we're involved in the lantra training as well and we've also just in recent weeks we've got that new squirrel group we've got six members of their group trained up for gray squirrel control so we're still working on that and also work on um, habitat management as well so this is um, something we did as part of the strategy now this was work we did with um, dr josh twining and this is our um part of our wider work that we're doing um, with some other organizations on nature recovery networks. Um, it's fairly complicated, but we basically looked at functional connectivity for gray squirrels and red squirrels across Northern Ireland. This was really interesting for us and it basically kinds of to try and show us are there limits to, to um, in the habitat to how reds can spread and are there way, places, you know, maybe where greys are spread more easily because of the connectivity. But it's just been quite interesting in showing us maybe why there aren't reds in certain pockets of the country where we thought there should be before, you know. Um, so, yeah, this is something that was part of the strategy and there'll be a lot more information in that when it comes out. Another thing that we looked at was basically just our priority. So this is possibly a draft map, not finalized yet, but we wanted to look at areas that were red squirrel strongholds, areas we thought could be strongholds, and then also look at our priorities for control. So we first looked at our priority ones or areas that are close to existing populations of red squirrels that we need to do right away. And then the second priority are those big, big source populations that we have all around Belfast and, and the urban areas and all around Loch Ney that are basically feeding in to all the little smaller populations of greys. So again, this is um, hopefully something that we can use going forward to target our conservation efforts. And that's everything from me. Thank you.